let's take a look at another optimization problem. You're a lifeguard and spot a drowning child 50 meters along the shore and 40 meter, meters from the shore to the child. You run along the shore for a while and then jump into the water and swim from there directly to the child. You can run at a rate of 4 meters per second and swim at a rate of 1.1 meters per second. How far along the shore should you run before jumping into the water in order to save the child? All right, so where do we start with an optimization problem? Recall, when you have an optimization problem, you are looking to maximize or minimize something. Now, nowhere in the problem does it say anything about maximizing something or minimizing something. But if we think about it, what we're actually trying to do as a lifeguard is we are trying to minimize the time it takes to get to the child that's drowning. So we are going to try and minimize something, specifically time. And so keeping that in mind, time is going to be the place where we start. That's going to be our function that we take the derivative of and set equal to zero. And that's where we're going to actually get all of the solving to occur. This being said, let's dissect the problem. So your life card, and you're no located right here at the origin in our picture. The child, the child's out in the ocean over here at the spot of 50 comma 40. You are running as the lifeguard along the shoreline. You can run faster than you can swim. So you're going to run as far as you can until you hit that sweet spot where at that point it's more advantageous to swim directly to the child than run any farther. So the question is where right here, what is that location where you jump from the shore into the water and start your swimming? So that's the question they actually ask. How far along the shore should you run before jumping into the water? But in order to figure that out, we're actually going to try to, to solve the bigger problem, which is minimizing the time. So let me start with some variables. I don't know if you can see, but right here, I see a couple features that, is that are going to help me. I see right here that this distance in the water is actually a hypotenuse of a right triangle. So that's going to be important to me. I also see that when I'm running, I'll be running along the shore. So this distance is also important to me. In fact, that's the distance we're looking for. How far am I going to be running along that shore? I'm going to do this strategic and I'm going to label a couple variables. Now, I'm thinking Pythagorean theorem, I'm thinking running along a, a, a shoreline, and the bigger question is, I have to minimize time. So let's put all of these thoughts and gather them together into a place to start. Namely, I'm going to start with what's called my time function. So the time it takes for the lifeguard to get to the child is equal to the time it takes on the shore, so the time that the lifeguard is running on the shore, plus the time that the lifeguard is swimming in the water, right? So time is composed of two segments, the time along the shore and the time swimming. Remember, we're minimizing time, so the whole goal is to find a function t, time, okay? Now, how can I express time? Well, let's think again, going back to our previous knowledge of distance, rate, and time, and see if this doesn't make sense. Distance, do you remember this formula? That distance equals rate times time. Or in other words, if I'm trying to solve for time, time is actually represented as distance divided by rate. Now, you might have seen it different ways in your physics class or earlier algebra classes, but time can be represented as the distance you traveled divided by the rate at which you travel. That gives me a really good focal point. Sorry, that gives me a really good focal point because now I have an idea of what I can do to finish up this time equation that I have up top. 
Let me explain. When I'm running along the shore, I'm running along a certain distance. When I hop in the water and swim, I'm going to be swimming a certain distance. What do I know about this picture? The first thing I know is that this leg of this right triangle that I was drawing is 40. If you like 40 meters, right? I don't know what this base is for this triangle, but if I call this X, that's a good focal point. And so if that's true, then the distance that I'm going to be swimming can be represented as the hypotenuse of this right triangle. And how do you get a hypotenuse? Well, it's a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Or with a little bit of math, this hypotenuse right here is equal to the square root of one leg squared plus the other leg squared. Does that make sense? So that distance that I'm traveling in the water that we're swimming is actually the square root of x squared plus 40 squared. That comes from the Pythagorean theorem. Now, how about this side when we're running along the shore? How can I represent that value? Well, let's see. Notice we have this little piece right here where we jump in the water, and that distance all the way to this straight perpendicular here at 50, right here, that's x. So that's where we jump in the water, and that's 50 units. So that must mean that this other part, so the part where we're running or the lifeguard is running along the shoreline can be represented by an expression, namely 50 minus x. It's 50 units all the way, but we're going to subtract off that little x piece. So this distance right here along the shore is 50 minus x. I think I now have all of the pieces together to write our time equation. Time or big T, equals the time running on the shore. Time running on the shore can be designated by the distance divided by the rate. The distance along the shore, I am representing by that expression 50 minus x. That's how long we are going to be running, or the lifeguard will be running along the shore divided by the rate, and the rate at which the lifeguard can run is 4 meters per second, so I'll divide that by 4. So that means the time running on the shore can be represented as 50 minus x over 4. Let's add to it the time it takes to swim. The time it takes to swim is the distance that you cover when you're in the water which we are representing as the square root of x squared plus 40 squared, or if we like, 1600. That's the distance of that hypotenuse, divided by the rate at which you swim. And the lifeguard can swim at 1.1 meters per second. This is a time function. T is a function of x. And it's equal to, if you like, 50 divided by 4 minus 1 fourth x plus 1 over 1.1 times the square root of x squared plus 1600. Recall when we do our optimization problems, the key is getting this function here that we're trying to maximize or minimize. In our case, we're trying to minimize it. And so once we have that equation written down, the rest becomes easier. Now we just have to apply our calculus. So what are we going to do? We're going to take that equation, t of x equals 50 over 4, and I'm going to rewrite it actually down here. So that means t of x equals 25 halves minus 1 fourth x plus 1 divided by 1.1 times the quantity of x squared plus 1600, all raised to the 1 half power. I'm setting it up because what do we want to do to minimize time? Well, we're going to look for a maximum or a minimum. And in order to do that, we're going to look for critical numbers. Specifically, we're going to take the first derivative of our, of our function and set it equal to 0. 
The derivative of t with respect to x is simply the derivative of 25 halves, which is 0, minus 1 fourth plus 1 over 1.1 times 1 half, and we're applying the chain rule right here, right? We have a function inside a function, so we're going to have to take the derivative of that outside part, which brings the half down the front and raises us to the negative one-half power. And then we're going to have to multiply by the derivative of the inside part. So the derivative of x squared plus 1600 is just 2x. Let me combine and put everything together. That means that my derivative of t is equal to negative one-fourth plus, and let's do a little bit of algebra here and cancel some things out. This 2 can cancel with this 2, and so that's going to leave us with x over 1.1 times the square root of x squared plus 1600. Oh, this is a long problem, but you know what? The end is in sight. We're almost done. Because once we take our derivative, what are we doing? We're trying to find the critical numbers, so we're going to set our derivative equal to 0. Right? We're going to set our derivative equal to 0. And so that amounts to solving this equation. I'm going to move that 1 fourth to the right side. So I have x divided by 1.1 times the square root of x squared plus 1600 equals positive 1 fourth, because I took my derivative and set it equal to 0. And now I have a proportion. And so one way to solve proportions is to cross multiply and divide. This is equivalent to just multiplying both sides of the equation by the least common denominator. But if I cross multiply, that gives me 4 times x. And on the right side, it gives me 1 times 1.1 times the square root of x squared plus 1600. And this takes us back to algebra class forever ago, right? How do we solve equations that have square roots in them? Oh my god. Okay, so we have to go back and do a little more algebra. So what do we have to do? To get rid of this square root, we have to square both sides of our equation, okay? Oh my gosh, all those algebra skills that you thought you would never use again in your life are coming back to haunt you, aren't they? So on the left side, we've got 4x squared, which is going to give us 16x squared. And on the right side, we have 1.1 squared, which is 1.1 times 1.1, or 1.21. And then the square root squared, that cancels each other out, right? And so that's just going to give us x squared plus 1,600. Oh, we're so close. Here we go. So we have 16x squared equals 1.21x squared plus 1.21 times 1,600, which is 1,936. A little bit of a distributive property there on the right side. What are we going to do? We're going to subtract 1.21 from both sides, or if we like, 1.21x squared. So 16 minus 1.21x squared is going to give us 14.79x squared equals 1,936. And the last step, well, almost the last step, is to divide both sides by 14.79. So we're going to take 1,936 and divide it by 14.79. And to solve for x, we're going to take a square root, plus or minus, but hold tight. Normally, we do take plus or minus when we take this square root. However, we want to be really careful here. x, remember, let's go back to our original picture. x up here is representing a distance, and distances are always positive. So I don't need to worry about the negative square root when I'm solving this. I'm simply going to have a positive square root as my answer. So we now have our x value. This is the value that minimizes our time function. 
x equals the square root of 1,936 divided by 14.79 should be the value that minimizes our time function. How can we verify? Well, we can verify by taking a second derivative and showing that our second derivative is in fact positive, which means we're concave up using the second derivative test, showing we have a minimum. Or if we want, because the second derivative is pretty much of a bear in this particular problem, I would go ahead and take Desmos, pull out Desmos, graph this function, and show that this value, square root of 1,936 divided by 14.79, which by the way is approximately 11.4411212, Two, eight, I would show that this value is where the minimum is for this function if I wanted to verify that that was in fact the value to minimize my time. Our last step, however, for this particular problem, and we're so close, is to actually answer the question that's being asked. We are being asked, how far along the shore do we run before jumping into the water? What is that? That is that yellow distance in our picture, right? That's what we were looking for. And that is represented by our expression 50 minus x. So the answer to this problem actually involves taking 50 and subtracting from it our x value, square root of 1,936 divided by 14.79, this value right here, which you could be able to enter into my open math, or if you want to go to the nearest three decimal places, gives you 38.559 meters. That's how far the lifeguard will want to run along the shore in order to minimize the time to get to the drowning child. Oops, sorry about that. I hope this makes sense. This is a long problem. So as you work it on your own, your own version, um, keep all the steps in mind. Remember, we're trying to minimize time. So your first job is to write a time equation. Time is distance divided by rate. And once you get your time equation, then you find the places where you have critical numbers. That's going to help you minimize your time. Good luck, and if you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to reach out.